Now, not all Indigenous Australians believe a voice to parliament is the right way to go. Sam Watson is an Aboriginal activist from the Black People's Union and the Black Sovereign Movement. He joined us a short time ago. Sam Watson, thank you for joining Afternoon Briefing. Now, on the day, October 14, Referendum Day, you'll be voting no. Why is that? The Labor government has put forward this referendum basically to absolve themselves of any meaningful action on Aboriginal affairs. Uh, this voice to parliament that they're proposing is a powerless advisory body. And given the track record of Labor, I don't believe it's going to do any good. Uh, now, Labor has had ample opportunity to make positive changes for Aboriginal people, but what they've done time and again is move backward. Um, just last week in Queensland, the Labor state government uh, suspended its own Human Rights Act uh, to allow them to lock up children as young as 10 in adult watch houses and turn those watch houses into detention centres. Now, the Labor government could have made a positive change uh, and raised the age of criminal responsibility. Uh, they could have made it um, illegal for children to be locked in watch houses. That's not what they've done. So I have no, uh, I have no uh, trust in, in the Labor government to really bring forth meaningful change. And I don't think that they should be allowed to absolve themselves um, with this tokenistic uh, voice to parliament. Sam, you talk about meaningful action. You've given one example there, but what else do you believe the federal or state governments should be doing to help Indigenous Australians? Well, we can go back through uh, Labor's uh, recent history and pull a few things uh, from their recent actions. The Labor plan for housing is abysmal. Uh, they could be helping Aboriginal people by addressing the housing crisis in a real way and not by gambling on the market. Uh, they could be uh, reinstating Wangan and Jagalungu's native title rights uh, so that mining uh, wouldn't be put ahead of our, uh, you know, tie to our country. Um, they could be addressing poverty. They could be address addressing uh, deaths in custody. Uh, but none of these things apparently uh, matter enough to the Labor government to really address and instead they're going forth with this referendum that has actually done more to divide the country than bring it together. What do you mean by dividing the country? What have you experienced in um, your personal circumstances or more generally in the community since this conversation around the referendum began? Well, Labor stated that the referendum... Uh, is an invitation from Aboriginal people uh, to walk into the future. What I see it as is a, an attempt from the Labor government um, to absolve themselves of any responsibility for Aboriginal affairs and to pass it on to the voice to parliament, which is a emerging layer of black bureaucrats. Um, you know, when, when I'm advocating for my rights and my people's rights, I'm often doing this against government and a layer of black bureaucrats that already exists. I don't want to have to do that against another layer of bureaucrats. Um, now, when this referendum discussion started, it also ignited the uh, right wing in this country and racists all came out of the woodwork to say that Aboriginal people don't deserve this. Um, that Aboriginal people don't deserve a voice to Parliament, that we don't deserve to have our voices heard. And I'm not saying that the voice is our voices heard, but it has ignited those debates. The decision to enshrine the voice in the Constitution, that idea came from the Uluru Statement of the Heart. Why shouldn't the Australian people be listening to that recommendation, given it came from a number of, of leaders in the Indigenous community? I'd say, firstly, that the uh, First Nations community nationally is not a monolith. There were, there were a lot of people who were uh, excluded from the uh, Ulara conference where the Uluru uh, Statement from the Heart uh, emerged. And 
there are a lot of people who were critical of the process at the at the conference and disagree with not only the contents of the statement from the heart, but how it was uh, derived. The advocates of the voice to parliament, though, say this is a way to ensure Indigenous communities are heard. So if the referendum is a no, a resounding no, what happens next? Where, where does Australia go from there? If the referendum is a no, then Aboriginal activists keep fighting what we've always been fighting for. Uh, we fight for self-determination, we fight for uh, the ability to live long and healthy lives, and we fight for the right to decide how we live those lives. Uh, we fight for the right to decide what happens on our lands and with our lands. The voice to parliament, if it gets through, isn't going to deliver on any of those things. It's not going to deliver land rights. It's not going to deliver an end to deaths in custody and over-incarceration uh, because it is just an advisory body. It's an advisory body that is designed by the government and can be ignored by the government at the end of the day if it doesn't make recommendations that the government likes. Well, a number of discussions to take place between now and October 14. Sam Watson, thank you for your time today on Afternoon.